Hey guys, it's Sam for Digital Meat, and in this Cinema 4D video, we're going to be taking a look at how we can use combined maps within Cinema 4D, combined metal rough maps. Now, if you don't know what I mean by metal rough, uh, you should probably go back to a video I did previously. It's this one, and it goes through a metal rough material setup in Cinema 4D. So let's move on to um, talking about combined texture maps uh, for Metal Rough and what I mean by that. Okay, let's talk about the scene very quickly. I've just got a box uh, on a floor and it's being lit by a sky with a HDR on it. And uh, if I click render quickly, I've got global illumination turned on. So that's how my scene's being lit. And this is the object we're gonna texture. So let's just put that up there. So what do I mean by combined Metal Rough texture maps? Well, if we have a look at the uh, normal workflow for Metal Rough, you can see here we've got an amb ambient occlusion map, a uh, base color or albedo, we've got a height map, we've also got a metallic map and a normal map, usually direct X, and a uh, roughness map. So that's your regular Metal Rough uh, workflow. Those are the maps that you'd expect to see, and that's what I used in my last video when plugging these maps into a material. Now, not all programs use those base texture maps, they use combined maps. And the reason they do this is to save on space. It might even be file size. There could be a number of reasons. So for instance, if you were using something like Unreal Engine, it may expect uh, metal rough maps in a particular way. Uh, in my case, I'm using the Unity Engine and it does indeed expect its metal rough maps in a particular way. So let's uh, open up Unity and have a look. We've got that box with this crate material on it. And if I select it and fold down the crate material, you'll see that we've got an albedo slot, which is where the albedo map goes. Obviously we've got metallic, normal, height and occlusion, but you're probably thinking, well, where's the, where's the um, roughness map? And where would that go? And it's because in Unity, the metallic map actually stores the roughness map in its alpha channel. That's how Unity expects those maps. So Unity will actually look at the alpha channel of the metallic map and say, oh yeah, there's the roughness. And that's what defines the roughness of, of the material. Uh, it also does the same thing for albedo and uh, transparency, so opacity. In this case, there's no opaque regions on, on this object or indeed on the map. But if there was, say there was a little window here, that would be described in the alpha channel. There wouldn't be a separate opacity map. It would actually be embedded into the alpha channel of the albedo map. So with that out of the way, is there a way that we can still utilize these maps in Cinema 4D? And why would you want to? Well, a good reason for that would be saving space. Uh, it'd be much better for us to be able to use the maps that you're going to be using in your Unity engine in Cinema 4D because then you don't have to have two separate sets of maps, one for Cinema 4D and one for Unity. It'd be much better if we could use one set of maps in both programs. So that's what we're going to look at. So let's go back to Cinema 4D and uh, let's create a material. We'll create this material. I'm going to call this a uh, wooden crate, just to keep things nice and tidy. And we can start plugging our stuff in. Just like in my previous video, this because this uh, texture is going to be using metal and uh, a dielectric, we're going to change, turn the color off and we're just going to do it in the reflectance channel. Um, like I said before, go back and view that other video if you have no idea what I'm talking about. Um, and that will definitely help you out. I'm going to remove the default specular. I'm going to add ggx and we're going to call this our die electric okay so let's do the easy maps first let's go into diffusion open this up and here are the maps that are being used in unity and you can see we've got an albedo transparency so if there was any transparency it'd be embedded in this we've got our ao our height map and you'll notice that we've got metallic smoothness here now I'll get to that when we start plugging those maps in. Let's get everything else out of the way first. So the AO first, that goes in our diffusion. That is now in there. Let's apply this to our box here. And in fact, let's turn off the, um, the line so we get a better view of our material. So NA, 
Excellent. So we've got something in our diffusion channel now. That's fine. Uh, we'll skip the reflectance channel for now. Let's go down to normal and open this up and load this in. Now, something that should be noted here, actually, before I get into that, let's go to editor and uh, turn this to 2K, get a bit more detail in the viewport that way. So let's go back to our normal map. In my other video, when we were doing a normal um, Metal Rough PBR workflow, I was flipping the green channel. And the reason I was doing that is because the type of normal we were using was a DirectX normal. And Cinema 4D uses an, uh, what is known as an OpenGL normal. So we flip the green channel so they display correctly. Now, the maps that are used in Unity are actually OpenGL as well. So in this case, because I'm using Unity maps, maps that were generated and made for Unity, I don't have to flip the green channel because it's already an OpenGL um, normal map. So that's why I'm not doing that. So let's move on to displacement. Turn this on. And this is very much like uh, the normal workflow. We just got a height map, so we can plug that in. I'm going to turn on sub polygon displacement, and I'm going to make the height maybe two or three centimeters, and that should do us for now. So that's all the maps that aren't going to be in the um, reflectance channel. So let's just check everything's working and give this a quick render. Yep, it appears the height map's working and the normal map and all, the, all those other maps. So let's close this and let's start working on our reflectance channel. So we set up a layer called dielectric, which is here. So let's just go through this. First of all, I'm going to get rid of the specular strength. The layer color is going to be left at white. The layer mask, we don't need one. Layer for now, we're going to change to a dielectric. There we go. And... Uh, that's pretty much it, apart from the roughness. This needs to be 100%, and then we're going to load a map in. But if we actually take a look at our available maps, you'll see there is no roughness map. And as I explained before, it's because the roughness map is actually embedded in the metallic map, in the alpha of the metallic map. But you'll notice here that it says metallic smoothness. The reason for that is because of Unity, basically. If I go back to Unity and have a look at our metallic map, you'll notice there's a slider underneath for smoothness. And this slider basically says, how much of the alpha channel do we want to use to inform us of our smoothness? In fact, underneath you can see the source says metallic alpha. So if I put this right up, it's used in the metallic alpha to, to determine the roughness, or in this case, smoothness. Now, this is what I wanted to talk about. This actually isn't a metal rough workflow. It's actually a metal smoothness workflow. So normally with a roughness map, a, a black value, zero, would be very, very smooth. And a value of one, being white, would be very, very rough. But in Unity, for God knows what reason, instead of going the standard route of metal rough, they've gone metal smooth. So in this case, black being zero actually equals super rough and a value of one being white is super smooth. So it's basically the inverse of a roughness map. It's actually a smoothness map. Now, you're probably thinking, well, that's going to present some problems in Cinema 4D um, because it's asking for a roughness map. So let's go back to Cinema 4D and see how we can deal with that. So we'll go back. And uh, I think we were plugging it into the right place yet. Yeah, this roughness channel here. So let's actually choose our metallic smoothness map. And as you can see, you look at that and go, well, it just looks like the metal map. That is not going to help us. And you'd be correct. That isn't going to help us at all. But if we actually click on the map itself and go into here, we can make some changes. First of all, we've got this button for layer set. And if we select it, it allows us to select which element of the texture we want to use. And in our case, we know that the roughness, or in this case, smoothness, is actually stored in the alpha channel. So if we go and click alpha channel and then click this alpha and press OK, you'll see that now we've extracted the alpha channel. So let's close this for a minute and just give this a quick render and see what we get. Okay, so it's a little bit hard to tell from this image, but the 
roughness map or smoothness in this case is actually inverted. What should be rough is actually quite shiny. And what should be quite shiny, these metal corners, is actually quite rough. So we need to invert this. And in Cinema 4D, you can actually do this. So not only can we, uh, let's get back to our roughness. So not only can we actually extract this texture from the alpha, but we, we can also invert it. So if we go down to this uh, space here, this black point and white point, and just take note of what this map looks like, we can actually invert these. So we can make the black point one, and the white point zero. And now we've inverted this map. So now you can see that these corners are actually very shiny and the wood is rough. So let's uh, give this another render. Okay, perfect. So that's how you would use combined maps in Cinema 4D. I'm just gonna go through the rest of the material so we can get the entire thing set up. Um, I don't think I've got anything else to do in the dielectric layer. I think we're all done here. And let's add another layer. I'm going to make a Lambertian diffuse. And I'm going to call this diffuse. And all I have to do here is turn the specular strength down and load in a texture to the color channel. And that'll be our albedo. And there we go. And now I've just got to create another layer, which is a GGX. And I'm going to call this metallic. Uh, if I could spell, that would help. There we go. In fact, let's just go through from the top. So, specular, bring it all the way down. Roughness, all the way up. Open this up. Oh, wrong button. There we go. Load in the texture, which will be our metallic smooth. Obviously, that's not right. So, again, we've got to invert it. Go in. Select the layer set, which is going to be alpha channel, alpha, OK. And then we're going to invert that. So the black point is one and the white point is zero. And there we go. So going back to the reflectance. So that's our roughness sorted out. Close this up down to layer color, which is just going to be our uh, color map. Don't worry. <laughs> I know it looks strange, but don't worry. Uh, layer mask. Obviously, we're going to need this. And that is going to be our metallic map. So we're using this as a mask. And obviously we don't need to uh, access the alpha channel for this. We just need the regular RGB. So that's fine. And the layer for now is obviously a conductor. And you notice the corners of this don't exactly match what we've got in Unity. These are a lot darker. And just like my last tutorial for the metallic layer, we need to say this is opaque. So we don't get any bleeding up from the diffuse and dielectric up the stack into the metallic layer. One thing I do want to do actually before I render is uh, go into the dielectric layer and temper this reflection strength down. Something like 25%. And we'll give that a render. So that's it guys, that's how you use this weird metallic, uh, metallic smooth workflow, especially with combined textures. And this will work for any other program that use, uses combined uh, textures as well. Uh, in, in my case, I'm using Unity, you, but you might be using something that expects PBR metal rough textures in another way. Um, but that's how you'd use them in Cinema 4D. That's how you'd extract those textures um, out of the alpha channel and uh, be able to utilize them properly. Okay, so I hope this was useful and I'll see you in the next one. If you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that bell to be notified of new tutorials. You can follow me on social media at Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn and Instagram. And make sure to visit me at digitalmeet.uk where you can vote for upcoming tutorials. Thanks for watching. Bye.